This video will be about vestment design and styles, but before I begin I need to thank a few people. First, thank you for your interest in vestment making. I'm sorry I haven't posted much lately. That's because I've, received, I've, moved, I've retired and moved back to uh, the mother house and in the process of moving my camera was broken. Thank you, Jessica, for sending me a new camera. Since I'm retired now and don't receive Social Security, my only income comes from investment making and seminars. And because of COVID, I had to cancel all of my seminars. I'm hoping that you might help out by donating a dollar or more. I have put a link below to Patreon. You can donate any amount you want, but if you do become a, a patron, you'll be entitled to certain perks such as extra bonus videos, more in, more in depth videos than what I'm doing on YouTube and uh, my website, which are always free. And, or some free items such as uh, books that we print. Uh, thank you so much for your support. All right, I want to talk a little bit about vestments and vestment styles. Uh, here you see the five diagrams of the five most popular vestment styles. These are the one in and how they've developed through time. The first the first vestment is the one in the upper left hand corner, the A vestment. It was it was just a round circle of cloth with a head uh, with an opening in the middle uh, for the head to go through. Uh, and over time, it, in order to save fabric, they cut that circle in half, had the right and left sides joined together in the middle, and covered that seam with ophrey, and then, and, and that developed into the conical style, which is the style on the right hand side. It's the, the one that looks like a cone. That's why it's called conical. Um, the, the trim going down the center is called ophrey, and that's what's covering the seam where the, the right and left hand sides meet. Ophrey also goes around the neck there to reinforce the neck opening. Uh, that particular one, that the picture, the diagram there, is Thomas of Beckett's. Um, and as again, over time, they cut more fabric away, and you we moved into the Gothic style, which is the one right below the conical. Um, with the first two vestments, they had to hold their hands up. They had to, all that fabric would drop to the floor, so they would pick it all up, and they would keep their arms up so that it would last stay in the um, their elbow region. And that's why priests hold their hands up like that. It's became part of the the gestures in mass and still is used that way. Uh, then the the vestment was cut up some more and it moved into the C vestment which is called the Charles Barameo or Philip Neary style and that's become very popular recently. It's kind of gothic in the back. If you were to look at the front it would look more like a fiddle back because it's very much cut away in the front. And then over time that uh, changed, was cut away even more, and went into what the center vest went, which is the fiddleback style. The fiddleback style was stayed around for a few centuries, and it had it's changed by region of the country, it, by regions and countries. So there's an Italian style of that vestment. There's a Spanish Belgium style. There's a French style. There's a German style. There's a Polish style, each a little bit different, but each one uh, basically the same overall. Now we're gonna, I'll, I'll show you some of the different vestments and um, you can see how they, they work. Um, all right, here's um, a conic, uh, not a conical, here's a circular vestment, a round vestment. There's actually two here, two different style, two different ones, same style. Uh, notice the extremely long stole in the front. Uh, this is a style that will stay for a while. Show, notice also all the fabric held up in the arms. Uh, and that's why the priest keeps his arms up like that. Here's another one again. The fabric is held up in the arms and the, 
The rest of it just drapes around him. And that's why priests keep their arms up like that. Um, this, vest, this is what the vestment looks like without being held up on your arms. All the way, see how it hangs all the way down, all the way around. This is a diagram showing how a round vestment over time was cut down into to a, till it became um, the fiddleback style. This is an 11th century conical vestment. Now to make the conical vestment again, they took half of the circle, took the right and left sides of it like a cope and joined them in the front. This is, and then that front section they covered with ophrey. That's again, see there's a lot of fabric up there on the elbows. Uh, and this is a diagram showing how to make a conical vestment. And you can see that it's half a circle and um, which is then going to be joined together. Notice also it could be cut even more in. And that's what you'll see as these go on. This is a, the front back diagram of what Thomas of Becket's vestment looks like. And this is the actual vestment. Uh, see again the ophrey coming down the front to hide the seam line. Um, this is another conical vestment. Notice the the ophrey here is uh, almost like a towel cross and again you see that stole hanging down below the vestment so it's, it, you can see it. Um, most of the stoles with the vestments now we don't see anymore. This is um, another conical vestment. Again, notice it's been cut away quite a bit. It's no longer round. It's becoming pointed like the last vestment picture I showed you. Um, here is the Gothic vestment. Notice if you look for at the top from between the neck and the, the wrist, you'll see that there's less fabric, though it still hangs very long. And notice the fabric here is embroidered. That's not part of the fabric. That's all embroidered on the fabric. Uh, you'll see that the, here's another one, exactly the same style that where the these angels are embroidered on the fabric with little motifs of flowers in between them. Uh, notice the shoulder area is just vines. So it's these are actually part of the embroidery. Here's another gothic with a green lining. See how the lining shows off the vestment because with the gothic style because they hold their arms up like that you can see the lining and it adds a nice contrast to the vestment. Here's another one. Notice the, the crucifixion scene, the way it's placed on this one. Again, this is a, from a museum. It's a very, these, some of these are museum pieces, very old pictures. Um, uh, here's another one where you have um, these diamond-shaped motifs that are embroidered or put onto the fabric, hanging down like pendants from the, from the Ophrey. Here's um, a 16th century Gothic. Notice we move from the 14th to the 16th. Again, a crucifixion scene on the back. Almost what you would find on a, a fiddleback, but this is on a Gothic. Here's a more modern Gothic. Uh, this is an unlined Gothic. Uh, many of the vestments were Gothic vestments are unlined. They're much easier to make that way. They also drape very well, but you don't have that nice contrast with the lining fabric that you saw in the earlier vestment. If you want that contrast, you have to line it, and that causes problems in itself. Uh, but here you see an unlined, or it might be lined with gold because you can't tell. This one also has a cross on it uh, the, in the ophrey. Uh, very simple. Another cross, again on a gothic, uh, with very busy fabric. Busy cross, busy fabric. Uh, this is a Charles Barameo vestment. This is actually Charles Barameo's vestment. Notice now how far it's been cut away. Up to, it's, it's the, and this is Philip Neary. See the vestment he's wearing? That's why we kind of call this style the Philip Neary style. Um, because most of the vestments look exactly like his. Again, there's ophrey column in the in the front, 
and look the fabric you don't need to have really ecclesiastical fabric they tended to like a lot of flowers um, the the Philip Neary style has this tau cross um, design usually in the front the back is usually a column the cross is usually on the front here's another one again this is the back and this is uh, the column is on the back of it and this has three um, embroideries of the Sacred Heart, the Immaculate Heart, and the Most Pure Heart of Joseph. Here's the Tau Cross that's on the front. Notice here's the, the neckline, and you have this um, Tau Cross design. The front is cut away, almost like a fiddleback. Uh, here's the Sacred Heart, the Immaculate Heart, and most pure heart of St. Joseph with motifs in between. This is a common design and as I say this has become very popular again. Now the fiddlebacks come in and note this is kind of just a, design, a diagram showing all the different styles of fiddlebacks usually by country. Um, Polish down here in the corner. Um, here's a fiddleback. Notice the the cross on it is made out of just like vines. Uh, I am the vine and you are the branches and the resurrection of our Lord in the middle. This is from another museum with uh, Christ the King on it. It's a beautiful embroidery on a gold vestment. This one has again across the cross on it with little motifs embroidered of various saints. This is a very busy fabric and a very busy cross. This has the crosses made out of stump work. These are all, this is almost three dimensional if you look at these scenes. And the fabric also is extremely busy. Uh, myself, I would not put a busy cross on a busy fabric. It kind of, to me, it detracts. This is St. Teresa of Lisieux's vestment that she made out of her mother's black serge dress. Uh, she did all the work on it and it's been copied a number of times. It's very popular still today. Here's a copy of it done in gold. Um, the same, the, the, this is actually painted on fabric. Here is gold on gold, and, but, but the gold here is a different type of gold, more metallic than the background, so it shows off. Uh, another vestment with a, this particular kind of cross. I want to say that's Spanish. Um, here's a, one of Our Lady with um, beautiful gold work and a very simple background. This is Pius X's vestment. This is an Italian style with a column in the front, column in the back, and all this elaborate embroidery, almost like filigree work working all over it. It's a beautiful. Look at the, this one is a nice, uh, it's black and red. And see how the red really shows up against the black? Here's a very simple design. Um, very little embroidery, but its simplicity makes it stand out. Here's a white fabric a light green trim and a dark green fabric. This is a here is a solemn high vestment set. It consists of a cope, a chasuble, a dalmatic, and a tunical. The tunical is on the far right. It's a tunical because it only has one band across. Dalmatics have two. The chasuble is in the center, and the cope is on the left. Here's a close-up of the cope. Um, it also has a number of uh, other pieces, a humeral veil, uh, three stoles, three maniples, chalice veil, and bursts. That's because uh, there are three people at the Mass, saying the Mass. Uh, this is a velvet vestment with um, a number of looks, saints surrounding our Lord. Um, Here's a, a vestment from a seminar. You can see how simple it is. Uh, here's another one from a, uh, from a seminar. This is made, the cross here is made only with 
um, trim. Here's one with trim and the and two types of fabric, a dark blue fabric and on a white fabric, which shows off. Here's one that she she applied the the busy fabric. She used a very tone on tone um, red. Here's the opposite, a very busy cross on a tone on tone uh, red fabric. Here's uh, a. This in this person made the uh, cross out of two types of trim, wide trim with narrow on each side. This is an embroidered one, again with the design in a cross in a kind of a Spanish style with embroidery around the edges. This is another one from a museum. This shows this is an Italian style vestments, but in the they liked very flowery fabric. Here's a velvet on velvet. Uh, very simple but very elegant. This is a, an Italian style, as I sh told you, has a column on the front and the back with this elaborate embroidery all around on both sides. Notice how narrow it is. These these styles typically are narrow. Here's another one of those Philip Neri style Italian style. Again, the Tau cross on the front and a, a column on the back. Notice there's no embroidery. Everything is just trim here. Here's a gold on gold with some red, probably velvet, to um, show off the, the edges of the cross. Here, again, this is an Italian style. Uh, it's slightly modified. It's a little wider at the bottom here than normal. And you have this collar at the top. Here's an elaborate embroidery on a very simple white background. Probably, it looks like probably more a fail. Here's a French style. French joined at the, at the shoulders. Um, again, this is a gold on gold. You kind of lose the embroidery because of that. But it's very popular. I've seen lots of these. Again, here's another one where they embroidered right on the fabric to make the fabric look different besides doing the elaborate embroidery on front and back. This is a Spanish-Belgium style. It meets at the chest instead of at the shoulder. This is a shovel style stole um, you, because it widens out at the bottom as opposed to a straight stole or maniple, which is exactly that straight. Both are popular and you have to need to ask your priest what he likes. This one has no appliques at all, it just uses the trim. Well, I hope that gives you a little bit better idea about what vestments can look like, gives you some ideas of vestments that you might be interested in copying or making. Come back often and look at them again. Also give, should give you an idea of the different styles. And there's no limit to what you can do. Uh, with your imagination.